happened by her sort of in that moment. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. By the way, so, Kyle, I love that his name is Kyle. So yeah, <laughs> Kyle Riker. Yeah. That's probably like a real, like, you know, <laughs> like Kyle's probably a, <laughs> an old man name, you know, by right. then, like nobody, everybody was using that one. And But I mean, like, that's what we were getting in the early 90s, all through mm -hmm. the 90s, really, in, in movies and media, was that women were defined by the men around them. And well, so there, there's no difference here. And the, so when we get a character like Shelby, who is literally not defined by any man around her, um, society at the time is like, oh, that's bad. She's way too ambitious. And the thing is that if Shelby had been a man who had come on board and, and been like, I'm gunning for your job, Riker, you know, we would have been like, oh, he's so handsome and so sexy and so strong and like, so. Oh, he's kind of a jerk, man. but you know, I love a bad boy. I kind of like him. exactly. Oh. So but that would have been that would have been a different reaction, but because it's a woman, it's looked on negatively. I wanted to add what you were saying. Not only are women just like defined by the men, but they're also caregivers, whether it's to men or not. So you know, you have Doctor Crusher, who is an actual doctor caring for people and then you have Deanna Troy who is a counselor and she's caring for like their mental health right when we had the head of security was a woman and then they just wasted it they could have <laughs> I go back to this all the time well, they could have written Tasha Yar it's so much better and yeah. you know given her more to do than just say open hailing frequencies or whatever and it's, it makes me even matter that she was they were talking about how she was going to be in like this martial arts thing when she dies she dies before she can go and i'm like see that would have been cool because everybody was hoping that she would win and people were betting on her to win and it's like because she's supposed to be badass but why didn't we really get to see that oh and i'm knocking things over i'm sorry okay i'm gonna calm down about tasha yar i'm sorry she that's okay <laughs> i get riled up about it when there's you know when there's hashtag justice for tasha right <laughs> oh justice for the female regulars on this show that yeah exactly is. yes justice for female regulars Ugh. Uh, anyway so yeah the Admiral wants Riker to take this job. You know, he tells Picard, kick his butt, you know, all that kind of thing. So then we see Riker and Shelby entering Shelby's quarters. She tells Riker she isn't quite sure what she's looking for. And I wasn't thinking about, like, to figure out if it's the Borg or not. I was like, is there something in her room she's looking for? <laughs> oh. <laughs> because the first time I watched this was the first time I'd seen it in a long time and so it just threw me for a loop and then I started laughing and I'm like I know what she meant <laughs> uh, you know there's parts of the hole that were damaged and they had this unusual magnetic resonance traces so that's kind of a that's kind of like a half techno babble those words seem like they mean something <laughs> oh, right. um, and so Riker calls it a Borg footprint <laughs> and <laughs> just makes me think like you like you look at it and it looks like a real footprint <laughs> <laughs> it's on the side of the ship and shelby is like well i'm gonna assign jordy and data to this away team which i mean she's looked over the roster and she knows who's who and who's what and she she's so on top of this because she knows who to pick like th this is who Riker picked she doesn't know that that's who goes on just about every away thing but you know she 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 did her own critical thinking she did her own like studying of people and was like this is who i want <laughs> but riker's like oh yeah they, i've already assigned them and i'm gonna go too you know <laughs> <laughs> well then too like we we think back to that scene in the ready room where admiral hansen said that she was in charge of a task force. Yeah. Um. So she's, she's been. She's a tactical commander. Yes, she's been running a task force to and... come up with weapons to defeat the board. She's used to being a leader and getting things done. Right. So when she comes in here and she's like, "Oh, I looked over the roster. Here's who I've picked," and Riker gets an attitude, like, "I, I get it. You felt like she stepped on your toes." Yeah. But then why not just? talk about it openly and honestly and say, okay, I appreciate your input. I know you're used to running a task force, but you know, here on the enterprise, I generally pick the away teams. So why don't we work on this together? No, instead they're both trying to be the dominant 
like alpha here. Yes, like he is. It's annoying that he's doing this, but I like it because he's actually sort of written to be sort of like he's threatened by her, you know, right. because, yes. you know, later he's, oh, I used to be like that, but I'm not like that anymore. And I'm just, you know, wah, wah, wah. Um, he has wrecked with his existential crisis. <laughs> right, right, right. He is threatened by her. You know, like, I don't usually, you know, because I've lived through all of this, so I don't usually toot my own horn about things, but I had somebody who was very threatened by my existence at my job, and he, but he was like, he was really super threatened by me, because I'm like, oh, I can do this, and I can do that. And he goes, oh, I thought it was going to take you a year to learn how to do all that stuff, and I'm like, it was two months. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he could have said, well, I already picked the teens and you've got a good eye. Those are the two people that I picked to be on the team besides myself. You know, I was going to go too. Like, he could have been nicer about it. But no, he's like, ah, this is my ship. I do things around here. But, you know, they're already, I already picked them, whatever. Anyway, so, so then, you know, Shelby, she takes it. She take, you know, she's fine. And she's just like, okay. It's cool if you're going to be there. I'll take any help I can get. You know, so instead of, like, being snarky to him or something or trying to, like, you know, out alpha him, she's just like, you know what? I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm going to be like, yeah, I could use your help because we got to get this done, you know? Right. <laughs> and then she's, like, asking him what, how he thinks of being on the Enterprise. Is it as great as it seems? And, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, of course. And she was just like, because... You know, I want to convince Captain Picard that I'm right for the job. And Riker's like, what job? It's like, come on. He's like, uh, your, your job, job yeah. buddy. He's like, uh, <laughs> yours? <laughs> She's like, I want that third filled-in circle on my collar. <laughs> Thank you very much. I am tired of having one empty circle with these two full circles. <laughs> <laughs> but like... You know, she's like, I heard you were leaving. And, like, he acts like just because he hasn't told anybody that no one's going to know. Right. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people talk about it because, I mean, the Enterprise is the flagship. But it's, it's the flagship ship and the whole Federation fleet. So, I mean, if there's rumors of someone leaving mm -hmm. and there's the option of another officer being able to be serve on the flagship, mm -hmm. like, they're going to jump at it and they're going to probably, and someone like her who is so ambitious and that she's gunning for the first officer's position, I'm sure she has like basically her, her ear to the grapevine at all times looking to see where she can maybe make a move because she knows what she wants in life. She knows what she wants in her career and she's always looking to make sure that she is like basically on the cusp of getting to that point. I get, I don't know. I... Riker hangs out with dudes, so he ought to know that dudes gossip just as much as girls do, and sometimes more. Some of them are just like, oh, hey, what's up? Oh, what's up? And then they don't really say anything else to anybody, but some of them just will, will totally, like, gossip about everybody and everything in their own special way. So even if he thought only the Admiral and, like, maybe some other guy knew, of course they're going to go and tell people whatever. You know that? has come over here with Shelby. What's he going to do? Not talk to her at all the whole time? If he thinks that she would be a good fit for that job, he's probably going to tell her that. Seemed like he had anyway. So it's like, eh, yeah. Dudes are, dudes are just as bad as women about that kind of thing. So, so his reply to her when she was talking about taking his job is, she says, I, I heard you were leaving. And he says, well, when I do, I'm sure you'll be the first to know. And it's like, oh, what a burn, Riker. <laughs> That was a little extra. Yeah, that was a little extra. Like, I mean, at, I, like least... he didn't, like, flail and then, like, just trounce off or something after. It seemed like he should have. I mean, at least he ends the scene with inviting her to the poker game, like, telling her where and when. So, I mean, he could have just been, like, he could have just laughed and not told her, but he does invite her to the poker game. I mean, I think he's probably just <clears throat> more intrigued by her than anything I'm else. Sorry. Yeah, I think he wants to, like, show her up when he invites her i don't think it's like oh yeah well then why don't you just come to the poker game it's like he's thinking yeah why don't you come to the poker game so i can beat you <laughs> at something we'll see how great you are <laughs> no but i'm sure that Riker was hoping to best her yeah. at poker to like you know reestablish his you know big dog status so we're at the poker game it's you know some of the usual suspects Riker, deanna troy data jordy 
I wrote turd face, meaning Wesley and Shelby. (laughs) (laughs) I just was trying to think of a funny thing to call Wesley. This whole scene, I just kept thinking, I just kept hearing Picard's voice saying, shut up, Wesley. (laughs) Okay, so what is great is I actually wrote in the notes, everybody, Wes is asking dumb questions and getting embarrassed. I mean, (laughs) so he's just basically having a normal day for him. (laughs) <laughs> like he's supposed to be so smart and sometimes he's really smart but then sometimes it's like dumb like if he's so smart why didn't he like study up on i don't know whatever it's fine i mean i think you know i think when it comes to wesley you know again wesley crusher not the best written character right, yeah. also th- the character of wesley crusher is meant to represent gene roddenberry as a young man oh to and, and his love of science fiction mm-hmm. and all that wesley is supposed to be like incredibly a genius kid mm-hmm. but like no street smarts like okay. no no I... co- like it's all all book smarts with him and so for him it's he's almost like data but right. annoying because yeah. at least data is like well he's an android like he can't help it he doesn't he doesn't know anything yeah. but wesley is a human being who should have picked <laughs> up on like social cues from other people but Maybe he's actually a psychopath. I don't know. Maybe he's actually <laughs> a plotting to kill everybody around him. I don't know. Because he just doesn't seem to understand how emotions work. <laughs> I was just thinking maybe he's on the spectrum somewhere. And you oh, are hundreds. full like psychopath. Maybe, maybe. But I mean, it, he almost is written like he's supposed to be on the spectrum. Like, yeah. And even in this scene with the with the poker game, I'm sure that Wesley understands, you know, the basics of poker, but he still falls for the bluff. He doesn't have enough yes, confidence in himself. and that's understandable. But him, like, asking questions about what cards people have or whatever it was, he was asked at the dump. Because Data's like, oh, you're not allowed to ask that. Because he was, like, asking what Data's other card was or something. It's like, what? What? Have you ever played any kind of game of cards? Yeah, I know. <laughs> also, too, like, it's worth pointing out, whenever they have these scenes of the crew playing poker, mm-hmm. I always think it's absolutely ridiculous because the Federation <laughs> does not use money. Money does not exist in the United Federation of Planets. So when they are like, it's too rich for my blood, what do you care? It's It's meaningless. They're There's... betting all that gold pressed latinum. <laughs> like the, at least, at least with the Ferengi They're... who use money, and and when they play betting, when when they gamble, they are gambling mm-hmm. with real money. Like that makes sense to me as a game of chance. This is meaningless. Here, I'll bet some more of my meaningless poker chips that have no <laughs> money behind it. Why not? I'll just replicate eight bajillion more. <laughs> Like it, it doesn't. It's just silly to me that they have gambling in the future when they don't use money. Well, to them, it's like if we were playing a board game and really getting into it. Like Monopoly money is anything. Guess. So you know, it's, it's, it's just funny. I guess it's, it's just a, one of those little you know, idiosyncrasy, it's, it's idiosyncrasy, an ancient game that they're playing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Anyway, so uh, you know they're going around and they're making throwing in their their chips. Wes is like, "I'll raise your ten, you know. And then Shelby's like, "All right." And then Riker's like, you know, trying to show off, and he's like, "Oh, look at my poker face, you all. Here's a hundred. So then everybody folds except for Shelby. She's like, "I gotta see what you've got," because you know she's like, "I don't care if I lose or not. I've got to see," you know. Yeah, I'm sure a big part of how she. Yeah made it to this part it made it to her this part in her career is that she doesn't back down yeah you know even if she knows that maybe she's gonna fail she's still gotta see it through she's like you know what even if i went all in on double jeopardy i still was on jeopardy and i'm gonna exactly you know (laughs) so he ends up losing to her and it's the greatest thing because he's like Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And Thank then poor you. Wesley is embarrassed again because his hand would have beat them both, but he didn't stay in because he didn't take any risks. But it was his first time playing. That I can't. I that's fine. I understand that. That was like supposed to be his first time playing with them. I get it. Asking to see people's cards. Get out of here, kid. 
I did write eye roll emoji next to you. Yeah, I saw that. Because I thought that was pretty funny. Then we see a shot of the Enterprise and then of the, like, 